Can anyone help me out? I'm looking for a lost episode of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm sure some of you remember, if you're from the northern part of Virginia, and watched the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, you might have seen this. Some backstory first. I saw this when I was eight, and when I first recall seeing this episode. The number of said episode, 66, of season one, there's only one season, and was only aired in Northern Virginia as the broadcasting station had ignored the notice to not play the final episode of the bundle due to its extreme adult content. This was the station's choice as it had purchased the syndication rights in its area, but was later sued by concerned parents after several children were diagnosed of light and neural hemorrhaging, causing severe nightmares and vomiting. Nobody was killed by viewing this episode, and older viewers seemed immune to the effects of whatever caused the bleeding. But needless to say, a freeze was put on the production of the series and was hushed up on the news. The show was replaced by the series named simply Sonic the Hedgehog. I started my search for the episode after the nightmares from watching the show returned after 16 years. The nightmare was vivid. It, it contained visions of people in a long line, all of them clutching their faces in despair. The, the, the people in this line spread the full length of the street and, it, and had seemingly abandoned their cars, leaving the doors open to join the others waiting. Everyone was deathly thin, naked, and when they spoke, they did so in what sounded like reverse tongues, but not so much was said in between the helpless sobs. It, everything had a dark red tone to it, like the sun was burning out at sunset, but never fully went down. Those that were not in line littered the streets, dead. I can't recall much from the dream other than that some other details hinted at looting, things like a line of dead riot police and smashed up windows, upturned cars, and even a collapsed skyscraper in the distance. But those in line paid no attention to this. They simply sobbed as the line shifted forward. The, the nightmare ends with one of the members of the line looking directly at me. He says nothing, but shifts to an unnatural pose, his arms bent at a 45 degree angle, and his legs spread into a box on the ground. His mouth agape as he did this, the rest of the people in the line did the same striking a slightly different twisted pose, all looking at me. I, th I then woke up with tears in my eyes. My first logical step to finding this lost episode was the station that, which originally aired it. There's nothing odd about the station. Its old management has long since moved on. Committed suicide, as the new manager pointed out to me. Over a cup of coffee, me and the new manager discussed the station's past. I intentionally eased into the subject, lost episode, and as it turned out, I was right to do so. When I brought up the subject, John, as he will now be known, the manager literally spilled his coffee on his lap. He told me that this subject was a personal one to him, as it turns out. John was the original owner's son. He, he was kind enough to explain to me that the legal fees he was receiving in conjunction with the mail he was receiving from children and parents alike had pushed him too far, and he hung himself in the family kitchen. I, I was a little taken aback by this news, so I figured maybe I was digging too deep and decided to drop this madness and just call it a day. But before I could exit John's office, he told me he would send me the mail, his reasoning, that he wanted me to know what happened. His curiosity was almost as deep as mine, not to 
surprising considering this episode killed his father. So I told him I'll take a, d a look deeper into the subject and get back to him on anything I dig up. The letters were what you would expect. Angry mothers asking what kind of station would air this filth. Legal fees ranging in hundreds of thousands of dollars, enough to send any station broke in the 90s. And of course, drawings from children depicting scenes from the episode. Distinct things like blood and unusually dull colors that persisted throughout the episode. Horrible things like Robotnik vomiting blood and tails crying over the corpse of a feathered headless bird. But, but one letter caught my attention specifically. It was a letter from the studio which produced the series. Thank you for purchasing the rights to air Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega, 1993 to 1994, all rights reserved. Enclosed is the series list, episode descriptions, episodes 1 to 66, the entirety of season 1, and legal information regarding ratings and airtimes. In poor handwriting, at the bottom of the page, a scrawled note was placed with the words, Episode 66 is not to be aired. This is a database error and contains corrupted material. The initials J.S. followed. I set out to find this episode, but to no avail. My second plan was to ask the people who sent the angry letters about the episode, about their take on it. Those who had not moved away since then gave me canned, I don't know, or not this again, responses. But I did chance upon one man, around my age, who remembers and taped the episode. He invited me in and showed me his VHS copy of the episode. It was badly decayed from years of neglect in his garage, and though the only bits I could make out was Tails screaming at Sonic with tears in his eyes. How could you, Sonic? What have you done? And the rest of the episode on the tape was just static. The occasional scream and twisted figures. Not animals or people, but figures staring at the viewer, their circular mouths and open black eyes emitting a slight screech. The tape sent chills up my spine, and I asked if I could take the tape for research I was doing into the episode, and he agreed quite readily, and I promised to keep him updated, as well as John. I took the tape back to John, and we watched it up to about 15 minutes, where John just jumped back in his seat. He told me he saw the figure with black eyes, but it spoke for a brief moment. John claimed that its lips moved, mouthing the word he thought was eternity. We watched the same one flash, one second flash for what must have been 30 times, and each time we both attempted to freeze the frame on the figure, only to have it disappear when we did so. I called it a day there, and we, we needed a better copy of this episode if we were to find out why this episode ended the entire series and caused me nightmares for much of my childhood. Short of traveling to France and talking to the animation studio, I gave them a call. They bluntly told me that there was no episode 66, and that 65 was the full season. Knowing this dead end, I called again from another phone and asked for the contact information of the voice actors. All the information was out of date, it seemed. The actors for Robotnik, Scratch, Grounder, and Sonic all given me number not in service errors. However, I did manage to contact Christopher Evan Welch, the voice of Tails, and hook him for a fake interview about his role in the 90s television. Chris turned up as you would expect, casual clothing and smile on his face. Your average guy in his light twenties. As he sat down, I asked about some of his roles in bands and television and worked my way to Sonic. When I did get there, however, he got really quite evasive. 
I asked him specifically about episode 66, and halfway through talking, taking a breath, he just stopped. His pupils almost retracted into nothing, and he looked at me and told me that the episodes only go up to 65. Of course I knew better, and I asked him about his script and talking to Sonic and what he'd done. He grabbed his face, not in frustration, but to wipe back his eyes, which were begging to well up. He took a deep breath and told me that the episode was written by Jeffrey Scott. He told me the usual, that he was always a nice man, was very patient with them as he read the script, being 11 at the time. But as the first season drew to a close, Jeffrey had become very angry with everyone, including 11-year-old Chris. The voice actor for Sonic and Robotnik threatened to quit over his behavior, but the executive producer paid the most large sums of cash in hand right there to read from the script Jeffrey had written. Apparently Jeffrey had an order from high up. The top of Sega, or as far as Chris knew at any time to produce this episode, listed as a business priority. Chris explained to me how, as they read the script, he felt great sorrow and terror, as if they had lost a close friend of family or family member, or had seen them die before them. He told me of the scarring to his vocal cords from the screaming that was invoked by reading the script. He told me of the blood that had leaked from the mouths of the actors of Robotnik and Sonic. The session end with, ended with the security pulling the actors from the studio before they died in the process of recording from blood loss. His mother pulled him from the show the next day, fearing for his safety. I stopped the interview there, and I asked for a copy of the episode, but the copy was never sent back to the actors. This is as far as I've come in the search for episode 66. I've heard that there may be a copy in the studio in France, but I have no way of getting there on my budget. But I know it exists, and I know many more out there must have a VHS copy, so this is why I asked the internet. Help me in my search.